Hello everybody and welcome to Transgressive Music. Today I'd like to present a rather special and certainly unusual mix. A mix dedicated entirely to the fascinating world of the German Schlager. And for that occasion I even went back to the microphone not only to create a more radiophonic atmosphere but also because this will be a more informative experience than my other mixes. It will be a little bit of a musical time travel. But first let me point out an interesting dichotomy. The German word Schlager represents some of my favorite German music but also some of my least favorite. How is that possible? Well this is possible because what people would call Schlager around 1935 would be so massively different from what people would call a Schlager around 1995. What once was a sophisticated precursor to a pop song filled with difficult Latin and jazz harmonies performed by classically trained musicians has deteriorated and degenerated into mindless muzak for a clapping TV audience during a matinee program for senior citizens. Today Schlager represents the worst of the German culture but it was not always like that and the music I would like to talk about now is an intimate snapshot of an era that was as creative, rebellious, moonstruck as it was dark, frightening and even deadly. And that's what the following hour is about. So let's go back in time, close your eyes and listen. I will take you to the streets of Berlin, Munich or Hamburg in the early 30s, throughout the 40s until the early 50s, from the disappearance of the Weimar Republic through the atrocities of the Third Reich to the new start of the post-war years and the German Wirtschaftswunder. Was der hat, so was der sonst rebellisch macht. Im Mai, da sind die Frauen nicht treu. Da braucht der Herz manchmal zwei und drei. Na ja, den einen Mann zum Ausgehen und den anderen zum Nachhausgehen. Aber bitte, das ist schon siebte im Monat Mai. Aber bitte, 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 bitte. bitte. Im Mai sind auch die Männer nicht treu. Die machen voll Konsequenz im Lenz. Genau dieselben Sachen, die die kleinen Mädchen machen. Aber bitte, das ist so siebte im Monat Mai. Da wird geliebt, da wird geflirtet und geküsst, bis dir das eines Tages selber über ist. Da will man einen und leider keinen, dem bleibt man treu. Aber dann kommt der Frühling und im Mai, da sind die Mädchen nicht treu. Da braucht der Herz manchmal zwei und drei. Na ja, den einen Mann zum Ausgehen und den anderen zum Nachhausgehen, aber bitte, das ist so Sitte im Monat Mai.
This was Michael Yari and his orchestra featuring Fita Benkov and Rudi Schurike singing a very charming duet. Particularly Fita Benkov's sassy style of singing makes me think of a very early form of rapping. Michael Yari is being regarded as one of the greatest songwriters and conductors of this era. The amount of successful songs he had written and produced in the 30s and 40s is quite staggering. His name was actually Maximilian Jarczyk, which did not sound much like showmanship, so he changed his name to Michael Yari. That his family name revealed his Jewish background has most likely played a role in this decision. As a teenager, Yari wanted to become a priest, but then the lightning of music struck him and he went to study church music and orchestral composition in Berlin. That was in 1929. He studied under Igor Stravinsky and Arnold Schönberg and Paul Hindemith and was well read in all the contemporary material. During his student years, Yari had started to play piano in cafes to earn some money and actually made a name for himself as a rising talent in the vibrant and highly progressive Berlin scene. In 1931, the city of Berlin awarded him the Beethoven Prize. Michael Yari graduated in 1933, the dark year of the Machtergreifung, the final seizure of control by the NSDAP, the SR, the SS, ending the short-lived era of Weimar. When Yari performed his final graduation concert, he was booed by the Nazis amongst the students. From now on, he had the stigma of a Jewish composer. Fita Benkov was, like many female Schlager singers, closer to the movie business of the Ufa Film Studios than to an actual musical education. She played in 113 movies, often with big names of those days like Heinz Rühmann and Hans Albers. There were two kinds of singers in the early Schlager. There were educated musicians following a career as vocalists and those that came from the movie business. Those didn't always have the greatest voices, but knew how to compensate this with a strong performance and a vocal charisma. This might have caused a bit of a frown amongst the trained musicians, but it created a degree of authenticity that gave Schlager his original character. So by classical standards, Fita Benkov was not much of a singer, but when she sang, she was extremely interesting. Rudi Schurike was a different caliber. He was a professional tenor dedicated to make it as popular artist. In 1936 he founded the Schurike Terzet. You can hear a great example of this vocal group in the following track called Du gehst durch all meine Träume, You Walk Through All My Dreams. Just listen to the bold opening chords showing how much these artists were interested in pushing the envelope and to explore new harmonic possibilities.
vibe. The original Schlager was a style usually derived from uh, early jazz, Cuban music and the Argentinian tango, but oftentimes embedded into a style coming from early salon music and the operetta. The elements of jazz and Cuban music were not only frowned upon by the authorities after 1933, this music was banned and oftentimes branded as inferior Negro music. But most of these composers loved jazz music, they loved all the new sounds coming from America. That's what they wanted to interpret, play, sing and write, and they knew the audience loved it. This was the pop music of those days, the youth culture, and the Nazis faced a contradiction they could not resolve easily, because propaganda minister Josef Goebbels had subsidized the German film industry as a central means of propaganda. It was one of the major tasks of the Babelsberg Dream Factory to jolly the German population along while the Nazis were committing atrocities in the East. So Goebbels needed sold-out cinema theaters, but people wanted to hear fresh music from the movie soundtracks and not some waltz from the 19th century. At least the young people craved for the modern sound from the West. So while jazz was generally banned in most situations, composers like Michael Yari constantly infused jazz and Cuban themes and chords into their work, particularly into film music, walking a thin line of acquiescence by the authorities. But there was also a phenomenon called the Swing Jugend, the Swing Youth, mostly well-educated middle-class teenagers meeting in rather secretive speakeasies where they could listen to genuine jazz music and dance to real swing. This was an incredible counterculture and a very dangerous enterprise. These kids were all into American culture and despised their Nazi leaders, but that was a risky lifestyle. In 1942, the Nazis organized a Germany-wide crackdown, particularly in the north in Hamburg, where the swing kids were very active. Many of them were deported into concentration camps for promoting jazz music. <laughs> Wo zwei sich verliebten, doch der Sand hat ihr Gefühl verbrannt. Die Swing stand in der Mitte, als ganz neutrale Dritte und sie fand, was da im Wege stand. Allerdings, sprach die Swing, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und mit einem Mal da ging's. Allerdings, sprach die Swing, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und dann ging's. Geldstrang, Knacker, Franke, stand nachts vor einem Schranke, doch das Schloss, das hat sich nicht berührt. Da sprach er voller Trauer zu seinem Freunde Bauer, es wird Zeit, dass man mich pensioniert. Allerdings, Allerdings braucht die Sphinx, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und mit einem einer ging's. Allerdings, Allerdings braucht die Sphinx, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und dann ging's. 
hübsche Fräulein Anne hat eine Autopanne, doch da sie vom Auto nicht versteht, rief schließlich ihr Begleiter, das geht nicht mehr so weiter, wenn das Ding nicht endlich weitergeht. Allerdings sprach die Sphinx, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und mit einem Mal da ging Allerdings sprach die Sphinx, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und dann An der Eger, da lebte mal ein Neger und er lebte dort schon viele Jahre. Doch nur die Mädchen wissen, die es eben wissen müssen, dass der Neger dort der Neger war. Allerdings, Allerdings sprach die Sphinx, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und mit einem Alter ging. Allerdings, Allerdings sprach die Sphinx, rückt das Ding mehr nach links und dann ging. Wonderful. This was Gitta Lind with the Südfunk Orchestra conducted by Erwin Lehn with the incredible Mackie Kasper on trumpet with one of the most beautiful trumpet solos of this genre. Now this song was a whiff of fresh air since it was recorded in 1945, just a month after the end of the war. It was recorded in the radio studios of the new founded SDR Südwestfunk. 
Gitta Lind had sang for Radio Luxembourg until this point. She was originally from the city of Trier in the Rhineland Palatinate, only a stone's throw away from Luxembourg. But she moved to the certainly less prestigious Stuttgart so she could work with Erwin Lehn at the SDR. So this is one of the first Schlager songs recorded and released after the war, surrounded by rubble and ruin. But before that we listened to the rather humorous Allerdings Sprach die Sphinx, again written by Michael Jari and performed by the orchestra of Wolf Gabe. On the vocals was the incredible Evelyn Kühnecke. Evelyn Kühnecke had a fascinating personality. I even remember her appearing on German television as this quick-witted lady late in her 70s. She hated the Nazis and when they sent her to the East Front to entertain the troops, she started to speak her mind, which led to her arrest and her imprisonment in Berlin-Tegel, where she awaited her execution for over two years. In the end, she was saved by the collapse of the Reich. The song was composed and recorded shortly after the war, but was immediately banned for having ambiguous lyrics, which in hindsight doesn't reveal itself that much, but indeed the chorus could be construed as to people trying to overcome their anatomical problems to achieve intercourse, which leads us to a central theme of many of the classical schlagers, the faintly wailed topic of sex. This song was written by Harald Böhmelt, performed by the piano orchestra of Herbert Jäger and Willi Stech, with Herbert Jäger on the piano and Willi Stech conducting. The vocal refrain was sung by the Metropol vocalisten. Now, I cannot compile an hour of German Schlager music, 
by presenting a plethora of Jewish composers, jazz-loving artists and nonconformist women who were circumventing the authorities through musical wits. I would love to be able to tell a story like that through the narrative of counterculture, art triumphant over bigotry and chauvinism. But it would be dishonest. Yes, all those things were true. The overall reality was much more complicated. Harald Böhmelt, whose composition we've just listened to, was one of the most successful composers and producers in those years, writing music for dozens of popular movies while being a respected member of the Nazi party. And some of the films he wrote music for had been banned in Germany after the World War II and classified as Nazi propaganda movies. So there were two types of artists in those days, those who managed to get by and those who had no trouble arranging themselves with the Nazi system and actually thrived in it. But Bermelt wrote some lovely tunes and that can become an ambiguity you have to face when dealing with the German Schlager of the 30s and 40s. <laughs> immer modern in allen Ländern das eine Wort ich liebe dich das wird immer so sein wird nie sich ändern und immer wieder frag ich mich warum liebt man so Vertraut dabei so oft dem Schein. Ja, enttäuscht die Liebe euch auch immer neu. Ihr bleibt treu, doch der Liebe. Und wenn ihr auch tausend Abschiedsbriefe schreibt, ihr seid doch gleich neu. Schöneres auf der Welt nicht gibt. Ja, es denkt jeder Mann und jede Frau so, es ist im Leben wie im Roman. Und weil alle so sind, bin ich genauso, denn unter uns, es ist was dran. Warum liebt man so die Liebe und kann ohne sie nicht glücklich sein? Warum glaubt man so an Liebe und vertraut dabei so blind dem Schein? The German Schlager of the 20s, 30s and 40s could of course appear very twee and had often the tendency to trivialize otherwise genuine musical sources. A great example would be the song Zwei Rote Lippen by Friedrich Schwarz, which is an adaptation of Carlos Gardel's outstanding composition Adios Muchachos, a heart-wrenching song from Argentina about death, illness and farewell. 
Friedrich Schwarz turned it into a ditty with a refrain that says, Two red lips and a glass of Tarragona, that's the most beautiful thing when I'm with my Doña. So, pretty corny stuff. <laughs> Weil wir singen, lass die Gitarren klingen, lass neue Gläser bringen, die Welt ist ja so schön. Ich werde bei meinem Lieben, denn das der Rieben hat uns ein Gott gegeben, auf das wir uns verstehen. Ihr Frauen, ihr Koketten, ihr Reiblenden, ihr Netten, im Tag der Kastanetten, weil wir uns heute drehen. Wir tanzen einen Tango, den schönsten Tango, bei seinen süßen Klängen mit ihr gestehen. Zwei rote Lippen und ein rosa Tarragona, das ist das Schönste in Barcelona. Da trinkt und küsst man unter blühenden Kastanien, so heiße Liebe gibt es nur bei uns in Spanien. Zwei rote Lippen und ein rosa Tarragona, und du bist glücklich mit deiner Donja. Denn wenn ein Mädelchen dich küsst in Barcelona, schenkt sie auch viel, wenn dir das Himmel reicht. Denk ich aus der Ferne, der spanischen Taverne, dort saß ich ja so gerne, es war mein Liebster Da kann die schönen Frauen ins Auge schauen, ich sag's euch im Vertrauen, nur ungern ging ich vor. Oh, gab es dort so feine, so fabelhafte Weine. Ihr wisst schon, was ich meine. Ich gebe euch mein Wort. Die Frau, die ich begilfe, die ich verirrte und die mir nicht verwirrte, die fand ich doch. Zwei rote Lippen und ein roter Tarragona, das ist das Schönste in Barcelona. Da trinkt und küsst man unter blühenden Kastanien, so heiße Liebe gibt es nur bei uns in Spanien. Zwei rote Lippen und ein roter Tarragona, und du bist glücklich mit deiner Donja. Denn wenn ein Mädelchen dich küsst in Barcelona, schränkt sie auch viel, denn viel das Himmel reicht. The lyrics may feel somewhat cringeworthy, but in a way they reflect a certain spirit within the German society that applied before and after the war, often expressed with the compound word Fernweh, the aching for distance. There is always this notorious German desire to visit sunny and southern places. And as a phenomenon this goes beyond the usual German weather and touches upon a cultural paradigm of a nation being closely associated with tidiness and precision, punctuality and a demeanor that other nations may interpret as cold, distant and far too civil and far too bourgeois. But inside the society itself there is this constant desire to shed this skin and expose themselves to the easy traits of the tropical life, the simple unburdened existence on a Mediterranean island. Those were of course flawed ideas and basically illusions that after the war manifested themselves in a new German obsession with the Urlaub, the vacation, turning entire subtropical regions into German enclaves and certainly contributing to the widespread trope of the ugly German. 
But even in the early days of the Schlager, long before the touristic invasion of Mallorca, Ibiza and Thailand, this desire for the exotic was mostly expressed by two constantly intertwining themes, sex and alcohol. And of course, sex is by far the most prevalent topic of the German Schlager in the 20s and 30s. It is what gave the Schlager its youthful identity and its edge in those years. But of course, always beautifully draped into innuendo and allegory. It is also very telling that the central aspect of the German Schlager is the one thing that got filtered and petered out after the war, when the Schlager started his constant decline into trivial and mind-numbing trifle, hated basically by everyone under the age of 50. But before the war, the Schlager was cocky and provocation was the name of the game, and young people, male and female, loved it. Ich hab an dich gedacht, als der Tango notturno zwischen Abend und Morgen aus der Ferne klang. Mein Herz ist aufgewacht, weil der Tango notturno eine zärtliche Kunde Deine Liebe mir sang, dass du mein Schicksal bist, hab voll Glück ich empfunden, als in einsamen Stunden ich vor Freude geweint. Ich hab an dich gedacht, als der Tango Noturno mit dem Zauber der Töne unsere Herzen vereint. Wie die Liebe wirklich ist, das könnte ich euch erzählen, denn ich kenne sie sehr gut. Ich weiß, dass sie schön ist und weiß, wie weh sie auch tut. Ich hab manchen Mann geküsst, und hab ihn auch vergessen, weil ein anderer mich begehrt, bis ein Fall der Zufall den richtigen Mann mir beschert. This was Tango Noturno, sung by Paula Negri. The music was composed by Hans Otto Borgmann and played by the orchestra Die Goldene Sieben. The song is actually an example of a rather more respectful approach to Tango Argentino, far from being the usual butchery of the South American genre. It was the title track of the Ufa movie of the same name, shot in 1937, so four years after the Nazis took over. The movie also stars Paula Negri in the lead role as a tragic female character. Her real name was Apollonia Chalupetz and she was from Poland. She started as a ballet dancer but fell ill with tuberculosis. So she switched to acting in 1913 and became a star of the Polish theatre scene in Warsaw at the age of only 17. 
In the following years she became an avid fan of this new dance from South America called Tango Argentino and over the years became a strong supporter of an active tango scene in Warsaw. At the end of the war, World War I that is, Pola Negri started to act in movies, particularly with Ernst Lubitsch, which opened the German and the American market for her. Today it is hard to imagine that there once was a time when Hollywood and Babelsberg were two seriously competing film markets. Pola Negri went to the USA and had certain success there, being propped up as the new Gloria Swanson. She was also rumored to have affairs with Charlie Chaplin and Rudolf Valentino. She became quite a socialite on both sides of the Atlantic and married the young oil baron Serge Medivani. In 1929, Pola Negri lost most of her wealth due to the famous Black Thursday. She returned to Europe and started a new career, but this was also marked by the fact that the age of the silent film was over and the American audience had a hard time to cope with her strong Polish accent. In 1935 she shot the movie Mazurka with the Ufa, directed by the cinematic renaissance man Willy Forst, with the music by Peter Kreuder. Now the movie became very popular with Adolf Hitler, who proclaimed himself a big Pola Negri fan. He even had a copy of the movie in his private cinema at his Alpine residence, the Berghof above Berchtesgaden. This was certainly a double-edged situation for Pola Negri. The propaganda minister Josef Goebbels had banned her music and revoked her acting license based on her Jewish background, but Hitler intervened and lifted the ban. This type of attention certainly came to haunt her later, in the 40s when she grew tired of her stereotypical roles in German movies and tried to revamp her career in France, but was always under the blemish of having had too close ties to the Nazis. I have mentioned Willy Forst, the director of Mazurka. Forst was an Austrian born in Vienna and became a successful star in three different disciplines as a movie director, as an actor and as a singer. His movies were mostly light-hearted comedies, but he was known for his intelligence and his sense of the historical context of the events unfolding around him. That's why he made an effort to stay clear of movie roles that would tie him with the Nazis. The Germans tried to cast him as the lead in White Harland's movie Jude Süß, which became this anti-Semitic racist magnum opus of the Ufa cinema, a movie still banned in Germany and other countries today. Josef Goebbels took offense to Willy Forst's refusal and limited strongly the actor's opportunities to work. But this certainly helped to establish Willy Forst's reputation in the post-war years when he was regarded as one of the few artists not conforming to the Nazi regime. I'd like to play a song from 1941, sung by the wonderful Willy Forst and composed by the before-mentioned Michael Jari. It is called Wir gehen so leicht am großen Glück vorbei, which translates to something like We so easily go past our great luck. It is a slow foxtrot and certainly one of my favorite Schlager songs with amazing lyrics by Bruno Baltz, who through the years was Michael Jari's permanent lyricist. At this point we are almost three years into the Second World War and this heartfelt song carries this sense of sadness and loss in a unique and beautiful way. Wir gehen so leicht am großen Glück vorbei und lassen uns das Schönste oft entgehen. So manche Liebe bleibt Liebelei, immer wieder heißt es nur leb wohl, auf Wiedersehen. Wir suchen oft das Glück am falschen Ort, doch wenn wir's merken, dann ist es zu spät. Dann ist die Liebe, 
dann ist der Traum vom großen Glück schon längst im Wind verweht. Man lernt sich kennen und erhofft so viel. Fast hat das Leben wieder Sinn und Ziel. Zwei dumme Worte und das Herz wird What a wonderful line in the song. Let me translate it for you. We all look for happiness in all the wrong places, but when we realize it's all too late, and the love and the dream of great happiness is all scattered in the wind. So this is a far cry from the usual innuendo about getting suggestible women drunk and certainly one of the great highlights of this genre. I do not want to close this session on a purely dismal note. But let me know if this mixed cloud selection was interesting to you and if you would like me to create a sequel. I have only focused on a small handful of artists here, composers and singers. We have barely scratched the surface of a musical style and genre that once moved and shook an entire generation of young Germans and Austrians and quickly adopted traits and aspects of pop music and the appendant culture almost 40 years before rock and roll. So there are many more stories to unearth, particularly in their context of world history. So have a nice day and maybe we'll do this again. I have certainly enjoyed this little journey into a less illuminated chapter of the musical story. And yes, I have intentionally avoided the big names like Marlene Dietrich and Zara Leander to create a more intimate entry into this world. I will close here with the major hit by Michael Jari and Bruno Balz, recorded in fact in German with the Chilean singer Rosita Serrano, whose career too intertwined with Germany in many ways. But that is a story for another day. Here's the wonderful song Rota Moon, recorded in 1938 on the eve of the Second World War. Okay, then 
Oh, 